In this video, I dive into everything about the myelin sheath. Let's get into it. The anatomy of the myelin sheath. The function and dysfunction of nerve insulation. What is myelin? Myelin is made of fat and protein and is wrapped in numerous layers around many of the nerves in the central nervous system, which includes your brain, spinal cord and the optic eye nerves. Oligodendrocytes are rather funny. These are oligo means many and these are mini branched. You can see one branch here and you can see uh, what it does is it's going to wrap its plasma membrane around multiple cells, more than one cell at a time. And that plasma membrane wraps around and around and around and around and forms myelin. A myelin sheath is designed to speed up the nerve impulses. We're going to spend significant time talking about the myelin sheath, so right now I'm just going to introduce this to you. And those oligodendrocytes are found in the central nervous system. Importantly, oligodendrocytes are not found in the uh, peripheral nervous system. So keep that in mind. That sometimes shows up as a true-false question or something along those lines. In the central nervous system, axons that are coated in a myelin sheath look kind of white or yellowish because of the lipid content of the myelin. And so we call this myelinated structure, these myelinated axons, the white matter of the cell. Unmyelinated cell bodies of these neurons are our gray matter. Okay. Now I want to have you look at this section right here. Okay, you can see this little tiny section there. And there's another one right here. Okay, And you can see a little bit of a part right there. What those are is unmyelinated segments of axons. And those unmyelinated segments of axons are called the nodes of Ranvier. I'm sorry, Ranvier is the correct pronunciation. I always say Ranvier because that helps me spell it. But it's nodes of Ranvier. And these little areas of unwrapped um, axon regenerate the electrical signal that is passing down the axon. We will look at the details of that in a little bit here. For right now, I want you to kind of see those in this picture that you're looking at. The space in between here to here is called our internodal space. Okay. And you can see that that internode is covered in the myelin sheath. And so we go from node of Ranvier through this layer of myelin to the next node of Ranvier. That's what the electrical signal does. It's refreshed or regenerated in the nodes, and then it travels through the next segment of myelin. We can get the electricity, the electrical signal will be generated at this initial segment of axon. Okay. And it swoops through this myelin, and then you can see my node of Ranvier right there, signal. And my node of Ranvier here refreshes that electric signal, and then it swoops through the, act, the myelin, gets refreshed, swoops on through, and that's essentially how it travels. And it's actually a very, very fast conductance of this electrical signal. It's quite rapid. Whereas in the uh, unmyelinated axon, it'll still travel through electrical conduction, but it has to journey through each segment of the axon. As mentioned, we will talk about this in more detail, but this is slower and myelinated axons are faster. One of the functions of the glia in the peripheral nervous system, specifically the swan cells, is to participate in um, axonal repair. Now, if damage to the neuron damages the cell body, generally the neuron will die and there's not really much that can be done to replace or repair that neuron. Uh, it does depend to some extent on the extent of the damage, but once those neurons are lost, they're lost. However, especially with the skeletal muscle system and to some extent with the autonomic nervous system, those cell bodies are fairly well protected with the skeletal muscle system. The uh, somatic motor neuron cell body is found in the spinal cord. So short of a spinal cord injury, the uh, damage to somatic motor neurons in particular tend to be through the axons. 
the swarm cells of the axon can help them participate with the, with the repair. So as you can see here, here's the axon. If that axon is damaged in some way or another, um, we're going to get a regeneration of the axon and a regeneration of the myelin sheath as well. And so we're going to take a look at that process. Here we can see that um, swan cells are capable of um, proliferating. Okay, and they're going to pro proliferate along the original path. Notice the micro macrophages uh, destroying the debris. That's actually an important process in any kind of tissue repair is to get rid of the necrotic and damaged tissue. Once we have swan cells creating this path, the original path you can see here, that actually allows the swan cells to release chemical messages that will communicate with the axon. It causes the axon to swell in this area here and begin to project outward this new growth. It will travel along the path laid out for it by the swan cells. Once we have a new axon, the swan cells will begin to elongate and wrap around the sheath forming the myelin. Myelin is a white colored sheath made of mostly fat and cholesterol that wraps around a nerve cell. Myelin's main function is to insulate the neuron, protect the axon and direct the nerve's impulse where it's supposed to go. In a healthy person, nerve cells send impulses to each other along the thin fiber that's attached to the nerve cell body. These thin projections are called axons, and most of them are protected by the myelin sheet, which allows nerve impulses to travel rapidly and effectively. Myelin is vital to a healthy nervous system, affecting everything from movement to cognition. What does myelin do? The condition of your myelin impacts your motor control and coordination, cognitive ability, memory, intelligence, problem solving, IQ, reading ability, brain development, reaction time, learning, sensory perception, attention, perception of reality and mood. Dysfunction. Myelin decreases with age. Biology professors use the insulated wire analogy to help students understand what myelin does. A naked wire will zap anything close to it, but an insulated wire will keep the electricity moving in the direction it's supposed to. Take this a step further. The circuitry of our brain is arranged more like a bundle of wires that all connect to different things. The quality of the wire's insulation in brain speak, an axon's myelin covering is especially crucial when all of the wires are packed in close. Imagine you flip a switch to turn on a lamp and instead you fire up the hair dryer. Wiring like that leaves you with a lot to sort through. Heavily myelinated neural pathways function up to 300 times faster than cells that have experienced neurodegeneration. This helps us move more quickly and make smarter decisions. These optimized neural pathways also help us become more emotionally agile, boosting your resiliency against life's greatest challenges. It is clear that myelin is important for living a healthy and fulfilled life. But in some cases, such as an immune system disorder, like multiple sclerosis or other demyelinating diseases, the myelination is unavoidable. 
If you've ever noticed the jerky, sudden movements babies make, this is because their myelin sheets are not fully developed at birth. They get older and the myelin matures and builds up. Their movements become smoother and more controlled. This process continues through adulthood. When myelin wears down, the neuron signal hops onto an axon it wasn't meant to activate. That opens you up to a whole host of potential problems with memory, movement, coordination and more. Partially because age limits the action of oligodendrocytes, the myelin-producing cells. Oligodendrocytes split into cells that produce myelin only until you're in your late 50s. Even without the age factor, oligodendrocytes are the most vulnerable nervous system cells you have. Demyelination is the term used to describe the destruction of the myelin sheet, the protective covering surrounding nerve fibers. This damage causes nerve signals to slow down or stop, resulting in neurological impairment. Depending on where in the central nervous system myelin is attacked, symptoms like sensory disturbances, vision problems, muscle spasms and bladder problems begin to manifest. This is why the symptoms of MS vary widely from one person to another as the location of myelin attacks varies within the central nervous system. Some of the things that can mess with myelin production include a high sugar diet, poor sleep quality, alcohol, nutrient deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, stroke, infections, inflammation, metabolic disorders, certain medications, immune disorders, myelin and the nervous systems. That is why autistics tend to also have less myelin and why the right diet plus additional supplementation is important to improve nervous system health and resilience to stress. Myelin, oligodendrocytes and swan cells. Before diving into ways to support your myelin, here's a quick myelin what's what. Myelin is the fatty sheet itself. Oligodendrocytes split off into myelin producing cells in the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Swan cells split into myelin producing cells in the peripheral nervous system, everywhere else in the body. If you have one of these conditions and suspect you might have symptoms of demyelination, don't worry. There are dietary and lifestyle modifications that can help your body repair and remanufacture myelin. Studies show that oligodendrocyte cells are responsible for the formation of new myelin in both the injured and normal adult brains. Brain injury and so-called myelin dysfunction may manifest in people with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, autism, 
people with language disorder, stuttering, depression, bipolar disorder, dyslexia, obsessive compulsive disorder, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, Tourette syndrome, and schizophrenia. Now that you have those straight, you can get a better idea of what goes wrong if we don't keep your myelin strong. Giving myelin the right environment and nourishment helps you stay headstrong throughout every stage of life. Remyelination – How to increase myelin for longevity As more studies reveal the role of myelinating cells in a healthy brain and body, more people are asking how to increase myelin to boost their longevity. So what exactly is myelin and the myelin sheet? And what do these things mean for living your best life? Here we outline everything you need to know about myelin loss and myelin repair, including how to create new myelin for a sharper, healthier and longer life. Ways to improve your myelin You don't need major motor problems to start paying attention to your myelin. Simple forgetfulness and brain fog signal that your myelin is struggling. Here's what you can do for routine myelin maintenance. Support your mitochondria. Frequent bulletproof radio guest Dr. Terry Walls reversed her MS by focusing on supporting her mitochondria. Mitochondria abnormalities tank your metabolism, which steals your cells' energy and causes a cascade that leads to lower myelin production and shoddy repair. Mitochondria gets first dips on brain energy. In fact, if energy drops low enough, the brain will break down myelin in order to liberate the energy potential in the fat-rich myelin sheet. If the right energy supply is available, your brain won't attack itself to get what it needs to carry out processes. To keep the brain well fed. Feed your brain ketones. Ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet is a very low carb diet, less than 50 grams of carbs per day. When you restrict carbohydrate rich foods such as grains, sugar, and even potatoes, legumes, and fruit, your body enters ketosis, a metabolic state in which your body and brain run on fatty acids and ketones instead of glucose. Ketones are brain energy. In the case of age-related mitochondrial dysfunction, the brain looks for ketones to meet energy demands. It craves ketones so badly that it will break down myelin in order to get to the fats. It needs to generate ketones and then it will use those ketones to make ATP for energy. Myelin benefits from the availability of ketones as well. High fat diets improve myelination and when both ketones and glucose are available, the brain chooses ketones to synthesize myelin. The best way to reduce inflammation is by following an anti-inflammatory diet. You should strive to eliminate all gluten, refined carbohydrates, particularly flour and processed food from your diet. Certain foods can disrupt proper thyroid function and you should avoid them to optimize brain and mental health. Gluten-containing grains like barley, wheat, rye and spelt are the worst offenders. Luckily, this is now quite 
common knowledge that actually gluten is a problem food. Do you suffer from grain brain, fatigue, brain fog, anxiety? Every day more people are learning about the effects that gluten can have on the gastrointestinal system and brain, among other areas of the body. While gluten sensitivity is a fairly well-known problem, a lot of people don't realize just how much it can affect their body. People generally associate it with stomach and intestinal problems, but there is a wide range of problems that people can experience, including inflammatory diseases, celiac disease, SIBO, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, neurological disorders, Hashimoto's steroiditis, which is important here. We come to that later. Autoimmune, cardiomyopathy, lymphoma, skin disease, asthma, allergies, eczema, and so on. And you see, actually, gluten is also a lectin. And there are many other lectins that cause issues from the plant kingdom. But gluten damages the brain and will cause brain fog. That's another article from the same site. Neurological problems linked to foods that are made from wheat. And non-wheat grains just as damaging as wheat gluten. So if you are suffering with any kind of chronic neurological health problem like migraines, yes, and headaches, balance issues, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, yes, brain fog sometimes, or chronic pain, I used to, yes, very much so, every single day. When I got out of bed, I had to sit down because the back pain was so bad and then I could not stand for longer than 30 minutes or else the back pain would become too strong. And then I had hip pain and this was really on a daily basis. And that was during 2018. Uh, yeah, until I decided I will not have it. This is enough. And then I switched my diet and I eliminated all of those foods. And not even paleo was enough to reverse it. I had to go all in carnivore just meat no plants and i did that for quite a long time and now i'm also supplementing some stuff so i call myself meat based it's still just animal foods but additional supplements like B vitamins um, vitamin D and K2 because I have a sun allergy and heat intolerance so I have to get it from food and then I also supplement with omega-3, which is animal-based anyway. Yeah, so I had to do this or else it would have been so bad. 
I was deficient in so many things and B vitamins as a vegan it's really hard to get them in the proper amount. Lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins and they are found in grains, plants, nuts and nightshade vegetables. Uh, I did a separate video on lectins and I can put the link in the description. And what that means to you is that they do damage by binding or attaching to parts to the intestines where absorption of nutrients take place. There you have it. This is called the brush borders. And when they do this, they can create whole body inflammation and block nutrient absorption, leading to all sorts of vitamin deficiencies. So that's why this is connected to the myelination. So it's this mechanism of binding to brush border that causes many of the GI symptoms to show up diarrhea, vomiting, vitamin deficiencies. From an evolutionary standpoint, lectins have evolved to withstand digestion or breakdown of its structure through a wide range of pH and temperatures. It almost is like a survival tactic, so the plant, nut, bean, grain, can continue to populate planet Earth despite the extremely acidic environment of whoever is trying to prey upon it. So what does this have to do with migraines, balance issues, MS, brain fog, hormonal problems or thyroid issues? More and more studies are showing the neurological consequences of eating not only lectins that come from wheat, but also the lectins found in soybeans, kidney beans, and many kinds of nuts. Remember that lectins are sticky structures, and so when they attach to parts of your body, our immune system sees them and wants to attack them and kill them. The only problem here is that your immune system is attacking the tissues those lectins have attached themselves to. This is the basis for autoimmunity and this has also been documented in those who suffer with rheumatoid arthritis. In people who suffer with multiple sclerosis, this is where the immune system destroys the myelin sheet and this breakdown impairs the signaling of nerve impulses. Let that sink in. Here again, study after study shows that there is a dietary component to autoimmunity and myelin sheet breakdown that is caused by lectins and gluten proteins. Eat the right fats. It's an indispensable component of myelin. In another Bulletproof radio episode featuring Dr. Valls, she explains that neural tissues is 70% saturated fat and cholesterol, so you need to be sure to give your brain the raw material it needs for myelin synthesis, repair and maintenance. The highest cholesterol content in the brain is found in myelin and cholesterol is essential to the myelin synthesis process. Some of the best sources of cholesterol include duck fat, goose fat, lard, beef tallow, grass fed butter or ghee, beef liver or egg yolks. And M oil of course. 
as well. This is a very, very good fat. Cholesterol is a waxy fat-like substance that's found in all cells of the body. Your body needs cholesterol to make hormones and vitamin D. Vitamin D and K2. Vitamin D is thought to aid in remyelination because it assists in regulating the role of oligodendrocytes which, as we've learned, aid in producing myelin. Specifically, vitamin D aids in the maturation of these cells. This nutrient is primarily absorbed through the sun, but most people can't get enough, especially during the winter. That's why I take this vitamin D supplement. If you decide to supplement, it's a good idea to also take some vitamin K with it as it has also been shown to support myelin but it can also be increased by consuming salmon egg yolks duck fat or m oil omega-3 fatty acids another vital fatty acid is dha the most abundant fatty acid in the brain They've been shown to help people overcome addiction, repair the blood-brain barrier, stimulate the vagus nerve. This is extremely important. And even reverse cognitive decline. The availability of DHA influences myelination. Omega-3 fatty acids may repair the myelin sheet because it nourishes the protective coatings fat content according to Bach. Omega-3 oils can be found in emu oil and fish oil supplements. I eat lots of wild salmon and supplement with krill oil daily. Bach recommends consuming the oil three times per day with meals and following the supplements dosage instructions. Fish oil contains high quantities of the essential fatty acids EPA and DHA which your body uses to produce myelin. Myelin cell membranes that contain these fatty acids tend to be more fluid which improves the efficiency of nerve impulse conduction, according to Judy Graham, author of the book Managing Multiple Sclerosis Naturally, a self-help guide to living with MS. Graham notes that the incidence of multiple sclerosis and autoimmune disease in which the immune system destroys myelin is lower in places where fish consumption is high. Also supplementing with pure uridine can protect the brain, enhance cognition and increase mood and motivation. It's synergistic with krill oil. B vitamins. According to Dr. Perlmutter, Author of Brain Maker and Grain Brain, vitamin B12 deficiency enhances the destruction of myelin and compromises the ability of the body to repair and rebuild damaged myelin sheet. Vitamin B12 is necessary for myelin synthesis. A study published in a 2009 issue of the Journal of Neurology neurosurgery and psychiatry found that low B12 levels were associated with increases in degeneration of white matter, myelinated nerve fibers in the brain. In over 1000 elderly study participants, vitamin B12, choline and inositol protect the myelin sheet from damage, 
according to nutritionist Phyllis A. Bach, author of Prescription for Nutritional Healing, specifically the methylcobalamin form of vitamin B12 could increase the production of proteins that regenerate nerve cells, which is particularly useful for the myelin sheet. The recommended dose of vitamin B12 is 1000 micrograms taken two times per day. If you follow a strict vegan diet, it is likely that you need to use a B12 supplement to obtain sufficient quantities of this essential nutrient. Folate vitamin B9 that plays an important role in the maintenance of myelin. Studies have shown that a deficiency can lead to reduced levels of myelin and that's why I started to eat liver again on a daily basis. It's a very good source of folate and a very good source for vitamin B12. One amazing study found that biotin, vitamin B7, activates enzymes involved in myelin synthesis and 91% of patients with multiple sclerosis improved with high doses of biotin. I started taking that too because um, somehow I had a bit of trouble and so I researched a lot of stuff and now I feel better taking this additionally. So it seems my body just needs some more additional supplementation and my guess is that my almost 19 years of vegetarianism and my four years of veganism have really damaged a lot and therefore I have to do my own version of meat-based and supplement additionally. That's not the same for everyone but for my body it's necessary. Lastly Pantotenic acid, vitamin B5, can indirectly help with myelin formation because it helps with the synthesis of fatty acids and myelin is mostly made up of fat. Vitamin Bs are found in shellfish, eggs, meat, liver, honey, poultry and fortified foods. And then we have the SAM-E. I have done a separate video on Sam E a while back and for me this is a very 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 good supplement. I really see a big difference when I take it or when I don't take it. But it's a bit pricey and right now I don't take it and I really feel different especially in regards to executive functioning and yeah it really makes a difference and again this is not for everybody you have to really try and see what happens and if it helps that's fine if it doesn't then just leave it out Every single body is different. Anyway, so SAMI isn't a B vitamin, but along with folate and B12, it is involved with methylation and has been shown to increase neuroplasticity, which is very important because this will help you change a brain structure that isn't beneficial especially in trauma and PTSD. SAMI is involved in the formation of myelin that surrounds and protects axons and SAMI can improve brain cell membrane fluidity, enhancing the function of neuroceptors, 
Sam E is the naturally occurring amino acid methionine bound to an ATP molecule and is found in nearly every cell in your body. And now it comes. Sam E helps produce and break down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine and melatonin in your brain. All of them were important. But especially for me, the dopamine. I always say I feel like lacking dopamine. And when I take Sam E, this is different. Sam E maintains cell membranes and plays a role in a healthy immune system. Sam E has been shown to relieve depression, anxiety, brain fog, and pain including astritic and fibromyalgia pain, improve memory, mood and sociability and support liver health, also very important. Zinc and micronutrients. Micronutrient deficiencies impact brain function and animal studies indicate that the myelin-zinc connection may be involved in brain impairment from nutrient deficiencies. Zinc ions strengthen the myelin sheet by preventing myelin basic protein from detaching from brain myelin membranes. Lack of zinc could explain weaknesses and deterioration. Some of the best food sources of zinc include oysters and grass-fed beef. Choline. Lecithin, also known as phosphatidylcholine, is a fatty substance comprised of choline, fatty acids and other lipid molecules. Lecithin is important for nerve transmission and can function as a source of choline for myelin production. This and Essential nutrient meaning you must consume it as a part of your diet. A study published in 2011 issue of nutrition research found that choline supplementation promoted nerve regeneration of the sciatic nerve, the main nerve in your legs. Foods with high choline Content include eggs and fatty cuts of meat, emu, oil or shrimps. Get enough iron. When your iron stores go low, your oligodendrocytes do not properly split into new cells and you won't produce the myelin you would if you had enough iron. That said, too much iron can oxidize in the body so don't go overboard. Get your iron from grass-fed beef and lamb and beef liver instead or use beef liver and spleen supplements. Iodine to support thyroid health. The process of myelination is known to depend on the thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone impacts brain function starting with early brain development in utero. Thyroid function directly affects myelin quality and people with sluggish thyroids almost universally list brain fog at the top of the symptoms list. The thyroid hormone T3 turns on myelin genes and signals the oligodendrocytes to differentiate into myelin producing cells. Additionally, T3 reduces damage to neurons while promoting remyelination in damaged nerve cells. Brain cells have more thyroid hormone receptors than any other tissue, which means that 
the proper uptake of thyroid hormone is essential for the brain cells to work properly. How much of what we call mental illness is actually thyroid driven? In my experience, a vast majority. T3 thyroid hormone is actually a bona fide neurotransmitter. If you don't have enough T3 or if its action is blocked, an entire cascade of neurotransmitter abnormalities may ensue, which can lead to mood and energy changes, including depression and anxiety. Scientists now consider thyroid hormone one of the major players in brain chemistry disorders. And, as with any brain chemical disorder, until treated correctly, thyroid hormone imbalance has serious effects on the patient's emotions and behavior. Thyroid hormone goes wonky for a number of reasons. The most common being iodine deficiency. Iodine deficiency measurably slows myelination. If you are deficient, iodine supplementation is an easy fix. Iodine supplements are cheap, so it's worth looking for a high quality kelp iodine supplement that comes from waters with low levels of heavy metals. If you choose to supplement, talk to your doctor. You may also want a quality selenium supplement to go along with. Lithium orotate 5 mg. Lithium is predominantly known as a medication given to bipolar patients to manage their symptoms. However, it's also an essential mineral. Low doses of lithium orotate 5 mg capsules and maximum 15 to 20 mg per day as a nootropic can be safely supplemented to support the brain and improve mental health. I take this one on a daily basis and I really feel a big difference. It kind of makes me happier, I would say. More content. Research shows that lithium stimulates the expression of myelin genes, restores the myelin structure and promotes remyelination. As an atropic, microdosing lithium provides some amazing anti-aging benefits. Recent research shows that low-dose lithium may also help slow the progression of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia and Parkinson's disease. Low-dose lithium also helps neurogenesis and memory and is a mood stabilizer. Lithium orotate can also increase your brain's growth hormone, BDNF. So it's definitely something you want to consider taking if you want to increase myelin in the brain. Brain-derived neuro tropic factor BDNF. BDNF strengthens the brain cells you have and turns on genes to produce new neurons and pathways. Elevated BDNF levels increase the rate of myelination as well as the thickness of sheet 
possibly stimulating the production of myelin basic protein. BDNF shows promise for myelin repair as a little extra BDNF stimulated remyelination in rats with nervous system injury. Vitamin C and collagen. Vitamin C plays a crucial role in myelin formation. It turns on genes that stimulate the production of BDNF, which helps brain cells survive and split into new neurons. In addition to stimulating BDNF, vitamin C helps along collagen production in the brain, which is linked to the formation of the myelin sheet. The ability of Schwann cells to make collagen also indicate the quality of myelin that the Schwann cells produce. Vitamin C is crucial to this process because collagen synthesis doesn't happen anywhere in the body without vitamin C. Consume flavonoids. There are several flavonoids, a diverse group of phytonutrients that have been demonstrated to promote myelination. Quercetin, one flavonoid in particular with potent antioxidant action, has been shown to increase the number of oligodendrocyte precursor cells and myelin basic protein cells. When I was researching quercetin, I discovered that honey with royal jelly actually contains natural quercetin as well as B vitamins. L-glycine. Glycine is an amino acid necessary to build muscle and tissue. The amino acid is typically used for repairing connective tissues that have been damaged, including the myelin sheet. Glycine is particularly effective for treating the central nervous system function. Excessive consumption of glycine can cause fatigue and an appropriate amount will improve energy levels. The recommended dose is 500 milligrams two times per day on an empty stomach. Herbs that increase myelin. Ashwagandha is a popular Indian herb commonly used to prevent anxiety. I take ashwagandha during periods of high stress during work mostly. Ginkgo bilboa is another common herb which is taken for cognitive enhancement or to alleviate cognitive decline. It helps to activate the prefrontal cortex. Its beneficial effect of cognition may be because it significantly increases the number of myelinated axons. Lion's mane, better known as lion's mane mushroom, might be my favorite way to regenerate myelin. Research shows that lion's mane increases the rate of myelination production and the process of myelination begins earlier in the presence of the mushroom. Upgrade your sleep hygiene. Sleep also turns on genes that repair and maintain myelin membranes. Deep sleep can also improve your brain's growth hormone, lower your stress hormone, and slow down the onset of dementia. Oligodendrocytes increase in number while you're asleep. If you have a hard time falling asleep, a high quality melatonin supplement will help you fall asleep. 
with the added benefit of reducing inflammation in the brain. Inflammation wreaks havoc on your oligodendrocytes and myelin, so you need to keep brain inflammation at a minimum anyway. Turn off household lights, get red light bulbs, install iris on your computer and wear blue blocking glasses as soon as it's dark outside. These glasses block out blue light in your environment. Blue light suppresses your body's production of melatonin. Go to bed at the same time every night. Supplement with magnesium and collagen before bed. Don't eat for three hours before bed. Completely black out room with curtains. Oxygen therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a treatment that enhances healing and recovery after injury to the central nervous system. Patients inhale 100% oxygen in a total body chamber. Usually, oxygen is transported throughout the body only by red blood cells. But with HBOT, oxygen is dissolved into all body fluids, including the fluids of the central nervous system. This leads to oxygen being carried to areas of the body where circulation is diminished or blocked. As a result, extra oxygen can reach all damaged tissues, including areas that need to heal. Researchers have found that HBOT can cause significant remyelination. Other studies show that it can alleviate myelinin damage. You'll need to find a practitioner or clinic in your area that provides this treatment. HBOT can be expensive though. That's why I decided to buy my own oxygen concentrator. An oxygen concentrator is much less expensive than HBOT, but it still helps a lot. Avoid EMFs. Living in a hyperconnected world, you are constantly exposed to EMFs unless you make a conscious effort to take a break from them. Electromagnetic field exposure contributes to myelin deterioration, especially in the elderly, in fetuses and in young people. Oh man, and they are on the phone like all the time. Especially the young ones. I never put my cell phone too close to my head. Even when I'm calling somebody, I put it on speaker and then I talk to it from a distance if I can help it. Or I write. I don't like using the phone for a long time. Especially because of this and when you have it so close to your head. Turning off your Wi-Fi and devices at night goes a long way. Put your phone on airplane mode when you're not using it or use a radiation blocking phone case such as safe sleeve. I did a lot of research into radiation blocking cases and safe sleeve is the best on the market. That's how they look like. Nothing special. I have not tested that. I just found this during my search 
for myelin protection. Yeah, so I can not say if this is legit or not, but I guess this guy did his research. They are manufactured with materials that have been third party tested to block 99% of radiation coming off a cell phone. If you have a laptop, don't touch it. Use a wired keyboard and wired mouse instead. Supplement with the herb rhodiola. It has radio protective effect. I didn't know that about rhodiola. That's interesting. Ancient healers have used adaptogens for hundreds of years. By the way, ashwagandha is an adaptogen as well. That's like coffee, but way, way better. The Vikings used them to increase physical and mental stamina. And the Russians experimented with them during the Cold War. Rhodiola, also known as golden root or arctic root, is a traditional Chinese medicine and Scandinavian herb and one of the most popular adaptogens used to increase physical and mental stamina. It can be found at high altitudes in the mountainous regions of Europe and Asia. In his book The Rhodiola Revolution, Transform your health with the herbal breakthrough of the 21st century. Dr. Richard Brown explains that the Soviet Union began testing and using rhodiola in the 1960s and found that it was effective for improving physical and mental performance. As a result, Russian astronauts, soldiers and Olympic athletes started using it so that they would have an unfair advantage over the United States. Natural healers have also been aware of rhodiola's benefits for centuries. Despite this, modern science is only now catching up and verifying its beneficial effects and health promoting properties. Rhodiola calms and the emotional system but is also activating and energizing for the brain's cognitive functions and it therefore is also a nootropic. To have these two benefits at the same time is quite unusual in nature. The very best adaptogenic herb for depression and fatigue. Good to know, right? And then of course avoid alcohol. Chronic alcoholism speeds up normal age-related myelin deterioration in the brain. Even after alcoholics quit drinking, you'll see damaged myelin, especially in the circuits that modulate impulsive behavior. Ah, yeah, that makes things clear to me now. That means it's harder to resist the urge to drink after quitting. Exercise Studies that assessed the effects of exercise on memory point to myelin as the reason for improvements. Exercise increased volume and thickness of myelin and at the same time reducing myelin loss which resulted in memory improvements. Additionally, exercise improved memory by reducing myelin damage from lack of blood flow.
which increased BDNF.